All right, my friends, how are you today? Aaron here bringing you daily horoscope for March 9th, 2021. It is Tuesday. Tuesdays are Mars days. And we have Mars at three degrees of Gemini, seeking truth, trying to figure out where we're going, trying to figure out what's going on. We've got the moon moving in the sign of Aquarius. And around 8, 9 in the morning, we're going to have a trine, easy flow of energy from air sign to air sign. The moon up in Aquarius to Mars down there in Gemini. Okay? So while the moon is, is taking this place of social stance, okay, emotional need, a need to get together with community, a need to figure out who is my tribe, a need to be social. All right? Hanging out there with Saturn. All right? It's going to make a conjunction to Saturn as the day moves on. Which sometimes Saturn, well, oftentimes Saturn can limit things, right? So this is saying emotional repression, okay? Now the moon, home in Cancer. Sun, home in the sign of Leo. So the Capricorn and Aquarian energy is a little bit less about emotions and more about getting things done, right? This is getting, we got to get to the top of the mountain. We can't complain about how hard it is to get to the top of the mountain when we know we just have a job to do, that Capricorn energy. And the Aquarian energy as well, it's a little bit more detached, Okay, uh, so this is just saying this is a, a, a need to get together, a need, a need to figure out uh, what, what we're trying to accomplish, a vision for the future. Okay, so if we, we, we can't put ourselves in a position of, of focusing too much on the past, and we're going to get there in a second, you know, uh, because we have to have a vision of the future. What is the potential outcome of how something could be? How great can something be? Okay, so when the emotional moon meets up with Saturn, Okay, it will be a little bit repressive, but at the same time, this is necessary, especially considering uh, of, of focusing too much on the past or worrying too much about the future, but simply being where we're at and having a vision for it. You know, it's not seeing the blank canvas, but seeing what the potential of that canvas could be. But this day is really all about Venus. Let me show you why. Venus here is now at the 15 degree marker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, squaring the nodes, okay? Venus square the nodes. Venus also creating a septile down here to Uranus, which is about breakthroughs, okay? This is extremely important. Venus deals with everything we love, want, and desire, okay? Similar to the, to the emotional needs of the moon, but this, this is a bit deeper. You know, Venus is... Um, love and appreciation for all of things is a bit deeper and being exalted here in the sign of Pisces, which is about limitlessness. There is no boundaries here. There are no boundaries. Okay. So Venus, square the nodes. What are we moving toward? What are we releasing? Okay. We are, we have to release stuff from our past. It takes a year and a half for Venus to get around the Zodiac here. Okay. So it only squares the nodes, you know, once every nine months-ish. Eh. Um, and this one's important because of its place of exaltation. Okay, where we want to be limitless. We don't want to hold on to whatever the past is that can be weighing us down. We want to look at all the possibilities here of the future. What could go wrong? Certainly. What could go right? You know, if we spend so much time planning on the things that go wrong... We, we, we almost, we limit ourselves from the potential of what could be. Okay, so Venus's job here, squaring the nodes, is extremely, extremely, extremely important. As you see here as well, the south node creating that quintile, an aspect I don't talk about too much here, but that is a creative way. All right, so, so a square is tension. A square is, says we need balance here. I can't hold on to these old ideas anymore. I have to seek new truth. Okay, Venus, Septile, Fate and Destined Connection. This is about love and breakthroughs. And Venus dealing, uh, ruling, or the, the planet associated with the sign of Taurus here, which is where Uranus is. This could be about material possessions. This could be about things. Why do I love certain things? Or this could be an abundance of certain things coming into our lives. Okay, uh, so these two making this connection is very, very, very powerful today. Okay, this can be a whole new illuminating way to look at love and the potential of what love could be. How good can my life be? How much love can I squeeze in? You know, how joyous can I be? Okay, and as well, do I need material things to bring joy to my life? 
Is there a new way to look at that? Is it about insight? Is it about knowledge that brings joy to my life? Is it releasing knowledge? Is it releasing that I'm not good enough, that I'm not smart enough, that I'm not pretty enough, that I'm not handsome enough, that I'm not thin enough, or that I'm too thin and not, you know, bulky enough or strong enough or whatever it is, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on there. So this day is really all about Venus. And this quintile energy from the south node to Uranus is a creative way, a creative way to break free of it. And then and, and similar to the septiles, it's like this unseen force, this unseen sweeping hand of fate. Maybe it's going to be a song. Maybe a song you're going to listen to today strikes something in you that, that you know, uh, plucks on those heart chords. Maybe it's seeing a photograph. Maybe, you know, it could be something artistic um, or, or, or the way that somebody does something or says something or the way that, you know, it's just like, I, what's that? Who's that? Who makes that song? You know about going. It's about going to the the thrift store basically and spending twenty bucks and getting all of these wonderful things. And you know, like some of those thrift store shoppers, it's just like they can have this amazing wardrobe, an amazing style by by mishmashing clothes or putting it together. And they have this, um, uh, you know, it really really incredible style. And it's not quite like everybody else's. That's also the beauty of the moon here. The moon, Mercury, Saturn, and Jupiter abundance thinking differently up in the sign of Aquarius is like, we're allowed to celebrate our inner weird. We don't have to look like everybody else. We don't have to have the same car, the same watch, the same wardrobe, the same phone, the same computer, the same whatever. You know, this is about celebrating our inner weird and then, and then feeling limitless. You know, like something I talked about a bit yesterday about, you know, uh, um, unleashing that part of the ego. And I, I know that was kind of a question here to one of my friends that, that got brought up on the, the comment section. And this is like, ego is not the enemy. To separate from our ego is like separating from our heart. It is impossible to live as a human being without an ego, you know. Especially, it's just in, in, in period. It, it, it's it's the way that we style our hair, the the lipstick you wear, the nail polish, how you you know, you groom your beard, uh, the clothes that you're wearing, the music you're listening to. You know that's ego, and that, you know there's the healthy aspect of ego. And when we're squashed, when it, when an ego is squashed, it's, it can be oppressive, okay. And then then it comes out in different ways, right? So in this this sense of of Jup uh, uh, Neptune, you know, almost in a conjunction to the sun, that'll be tomorrow. Neptune Sun conjunction and Venus so close, you're know, getting ready for this new moon, this new beginning. Limitlessness, you know, so it's like if we're feeling oppressed, if we're feeling pinched, it's important to release that hose. You know, it's like uh, my singing voice is no good. If I'm convincing myself that my singing voice is no good, you know, then I'm not going to be able to sing. I'm not going to be able to have a healthy ego in order to be able to sing confidently within a group. Okay. Or if I'm, you know, whatever it may be. If I'm thinking that I'm not confident about doing this, so this is like a squashed ego. So this is where the, this energy with Neptune and the Sun and Pisces and Venus and Pisces squaring the nodes comes into a huge play because we're releasing part of that self that, that squashes the ego in, in an unhealthy way, right? Think of it like this as well, the Sun shining all the time. That's part of ego, okay? Look at nature. This is part of ego. The sun is, is ego, ego self, okay? So the sun shining all the time. If there was no nightlife, there was no moonlight, if there was no clouds to cover, if there was no rain to cloud, to, to stop the sun from shining, if the sun was just shining all the time, our food would dry up. It'd be impossible to get outside and go celebrate sometimes. We would have no rain, you know? So it's just like there's a healthy balance of all these things. So it's like there's, there's some of this new age thinking or spiritual thinking about, you know, kill the ego or ego death. They're not necessarily the best words to be associating with it. It's more about an, an awakening. Uh, recognizing our own ego. When our ego is too big, that's the sun wanting to shine all the time and not realizing it needs the other elements, that it needs the shade from those trees, that it needs the shade from those clouds, that it needs the rain. You know, that's the healthy balance of the ego. But at the same time, the sun never stops shining its light at 100%. It never dims its light, no matter what happens down here on planet Earth right? So, so it's important we understand all of those elements and that we shine our brightest and we don't allow somebody, something else to, to take the wind out of our sails, you know, and, and say that, that we, you know, we can't do this. We can't express ourselves this certain way. 
you know, and, and, and all of this Aquarian energy is like, is the director of the show, is the visionary. We have to have this vision of the future. We have to have a vision of who we are. See it in your mind right? And create. This is all a game, <laughs> all right? So we have a vision for ourselves. We see it. We live it. We be it. We expand. We allow ourselves to expand and be it without being limited and allowing ourselves to release whatever we need to on an emotional, on a deep emotional level, you know, or it can be a materialistic level, letting go of things or the idea that I have to have this certain thing to fit in with this group, to be appreciated, to be liked by this guy, to be liked by this girl, you know, setting ourselves free. It's a beautiful day, my friends. Enjoy it, and we'll see you tomorrow.